Hi everyone. So continuing my discussion of fatigue failure in parts, uh, I mentioned previously that we gather uh, our information about you know when we can predict a fatigue failure based on these repeated experiments that generate a whole bunch of data that we can then analyze um, to determine whether or not something will fail and, and how we can predict whether the part that we're designing will fail based on that information. So I pulled up a few, a few figures here from the textbook to talk about um, where we can get this information. And of course, the data presented in the textbook is just one source of information. Um, you know, we could, we could find other sources of data uh, and likely would uh, when we're trying to pick you know, the, the criteria for a specific thing that we're actually working on. But it's a good example set. So this is what a fatigue strength versus number of cycles plot might look like if we collect a bunch of data. So what we can see here is that on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of these data points, right? And they're all clustered here under or at a low number of cycles. And then there's a few out here at a very high number of cycles. And basically what this data then tells us is that, now obviously there's only, uh, there's only three data points out here. Uh, in, in a real set of data that we'd be using for this, we'd obviously rely on much more than three tests to, to determine that. But what this tells us is that the strength, as we continue to, um, increase the number of cycles, the strength uh, that our part will survive until goes down very quickly. And then at some point, the parts seem to last a really long time. And note here, it's not 100 cycles, it's 100 times 10 to the sixth cycles. So that's what, like 100 million cycles, right? It's quite a bit. And it gets easier to visualize this data if we change the axes a little bit. So this is another view of, uh, of this data, but now using a, a log scale on the x-axis. So all that data that was initially um, to the squeezed over in the left-hand side is now here, kind of in the middle, and we can see there's a, a curve um, passing through many of the data points that we could you know plot. And then again, we have these data points out to the right, which look like you know, they lasted quite a long time. Now, if I scroll down again, I can change my, my axes again to say, well, what if we have a log log curve? And that means putting a log on the Y axis in addition to the X axis. And again, we plot this same data. And what we now find is that, okay, we get kind of this linear line and then eventually it, it becomes a horizontal flat line out at what we are calling the endurance limit. And the nice thing about this vor uh, version of the chart is that it gives us kind of a clear transition point, right? A clear number of cycles transition point. Um, and we can see, you know, the data a little bit more clearly. Um, really what we're interested in here is this SN prime, which is under these ideal test conditions, what is the, the long life endurance limit? So if I wanted to put this part into into a service life effectively forever, um, or at least high enough number of cycles that we'd never never observe the failure, then I wanna stay above this endurance limit, or excuse me, uh, below this endurance limit for the stress that I apply. This would be the limit um, on the stress or the limit uh, imposed on the load that I apply to my part. Uh, and that's all good information. So once we know that, we can do something with it. Now, of course, when we're actually designing a part, we're not likely to design something for infinite life, right? That's typically expensive. Um, we might design something for a, a predictable amount of life. And, and again, that's another situation that we'll talk about later. So this is a, another plot of some data, um, and this is specifically for wrought steel. So it's, it's a specific material uh, set of material conditions, um, and it gives us a data set for that. And it's something that we can use then in that they took all these data points. And of course, as we would expect with anything that's, you know, a little bit unpredictable, 
there's a wide range, right? It's not just, you know, everything falls on a nice line and, and plots cleanly. Uh, there's a range of values um, at each life cycle for when these parts failed and what sort of stress they're under when they failed. So what this line represents then is information about, you know, uh, I think in this data set it's 90% 90, 90 reliability. So we can expect roughly 90% of our, of our parts to survive, not fail, under these conditions if we stay below this line. Because all of these dots represent failures during the experiment, and the dots below the line represent ones that didn't fail. So, um, or I think I said that backwards, but um, yeah, so the, the ones above, well, I okay, scratch that, take that back. All of the dots represent failures, right? The ones above the line are ones that lasted longer than what this you know data is suggesting for that limit, that endurance limit. Uh, the ones below the line didn't even make it to that point that this data is providing. But again, it's it's because we're using this 90% reliability um, idea um, to get that information. So there's kind of two key things that we would often, um, two bits of information that we would often use when working with this kind of data. One is over here on the left-hand side, we have the, the 10 to the third life. So down here on the x-axis, this is 10 to the third cycles. So that's a thousand cycles and we get some information. They're saying that the endurance limit at 10 to the third would be 0 0.9 SU or, you know, these other me measures, depending on what we know, um, for example, Brunel hardness or, or something like that. Um, and then we have this data out here, which is for anything greater than 10 to the six cycles. So a million cycles, we have SN prime and SN prime is going to be 0 0.5 times the ultimate strength of our material or again in, in hardness values um, or in relation to the hardness. And the nice thing about these two data points is we really only need these two data points to define the whole chart, right? Because these are straight lines, if we can plot this point and we can plot this point here at 10 to the sixth, then we can define this whole chart, the, the line connecting these two data points and then it's a horizontal line over from there. So that gives us a lot of information and we can read off of this style of chart the bits that we need, the SN prime value in terms of ultimate strength and the, the 10 to the third life, uh, again, in terms of the ultimate strength, and we can use those to do calculations. All right, thank you.